New, 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 new. <laughs> okay. New. Yeah, so let's uh, kick it off. First up. This is the V3 of the um, Monk Makes Raspberry Robot Board. So Simon Monk, who's done a bunch of tutorials for us, um, has made a new version of his uh, Raspberry Robot Board. So this robot board is kind of nice. It has a buck converter. So you can basically power your entire Raspberry Pi plus robot um, from, uh, uh, like I think, 9 to 12 volts. You can also use that to drive a single stepper motor or two DC motors. Um, it's also got a um, open collector, like high current drive. It's a little add-on that kind of helps you do robotics projects. It works with the Raspberry Pi B. Uh, it also will fit on the B plus or the A plus or even the Pi Zero, but it just doesn't use the full um, 20 pins of uh, the uh, uh, connector. So I have it here. That's kind of cute. Yeah, so the new version comes with a TB6612. Um, and I think it, it does something a little bit uh, nicer with the power supply. I don't remember exactly what it was. You can check the product page for the update or, of course, the Monk Makes website. But, um, yeah, if you, if you want to get fully assembled, plug-and-play robotics friend for your Pi, this is a good choice. Okay. Next up. BNCs. We have a bunch of these for different types of connectors. And um, today I got, uh, we put in the ones for the BNC uh, plug and socket. Now, I know what you're about to say. You're like, BNCs are usually on coaxial cable, and coaxial cable is impedance match. So you get like 50 ohm or 75 ohm cable for use with like cable TV or cable and whatever. Yeah, but sometimes you have test equipment and it just happens to have BNC connectors on it. Um, and so you don't care about the impedance, you just want to connect to it. So just be aware that like, you know, you shouldn't use this to wire up your cable modem. I mean, it might work, maybe, for like a short run or something. Um, I guess you could like also put in a resistor or something, although I don't know if that would work. Um, but this is basically just for like, if you want to connect things between B and C connectors, especially like I have a, I have a logic, in a logic analyzer, I am. A, a frequency generator that has BNC output, or you know, TTL sync is on BNC. I think that's kind of a nice way to um, to plug it in and, and connect. So that's what these are good for. Okay. Next up, um, this is the Hackaday Volume Two Omnibus. It's a lovely magazine. They publish this once a year, I think. No, I, every, I think I think every it's, six months or so. I think it's been a couple in a year. Yeah, okay, so you know, it's not every month, but when it comes out, it has all sorts of um, lovely projects. It's kind of the best of Hackaday, but it goes in depth. Um, you know, you get uh, drawings and, and, and um, cartoons and, uh, you know, detailed research and quotes, and it's like really lovely art. Yeah. So, I don't know, this is kind of fun. It's like, a, what I like is that it isn't monthly, so you should. More zines. Yeah, it's like more like a zine. Like, you can pick this up when it's available. Um, they have an interview with the, the Satinogs people who won last year's um, uh, Hackaday Prize. Um, you know, information about the, the kind of research into like the Volkswagen uh, diesel um, analysis, uh, how to um, use the 16-bit MCUs. I guess this is a, I don't know exactly what the project this is about. Um, rice farming technology. That's by Akiba, who's a friend of ours. Uh, Chris Akiba, um, he's doing a lot of uh, farm hacking. It's doing sensors and and um, wireless research around like rice farming because he's in in Tokyo. Not he's outside Tokyo on the hacker farm in Japan. And um, you know, there's an article by uh, Chris Anderson about uh, drones and Skynet and peer-to-peer -peer communication, and an article about um, Shenzhen. I mean, it just it goes on and on. Anyways, check it out. Very interesting stuff. Okay. Next up, this is a little Pi Zero case. Yeah, these are cute little Pi Zero cases from C4 Labs. So it, it, this is a nice wooden plastic. Um, it has a heat sink. The heat sink isn't required. I kind of wish it wasn't included, but it, it doesn't hurt. You can put a heat sink on your Raspberry Pi Zero. It won't make it run any faster, but um, it's there. Uh, so yeah, this, this little case has a nice wooden feel and look to it. And then there's a secondary one that kind of comes with it, um, not comes with it, but uh, also by C4 Labs. And that's um, a version that has a breadboard as well. So can you click on the 3004? 
Um, so this is kind of a cute idea. I like this. You could you could solder wires or put in a GPIO header, and then you have a breadboard that you can jumper wires to. And, and the Pi Zero is, is very small and cute. And so this is a kind of a neat um, prototyping board. I, I really like this idea, and I wish I had thought of it. So I'll carry it in the store. Okay. And then um, kind of the stars of the show tonight, besides you, this is the new Feather. Yeah, we have, this is I think kind of like the final blue fruit board. We have like six different types of blue fruits. Um, this is the blue fruit uh, Feather M0. So this is a, an AtSamD uh, at 21 G18. It's a Cortex M0 processor. It's the same processor used in the Arduino Zero. We really, really like it. Um, because it's um, a really nice upgrade to the Arduino Zero chip or the, the basic AVR chips. It's a 32-bit processor. It's got DMA. It's got uh, a quarter megabyte of flash. It has 32K of RAM. Um, it has tons of GPIO. It has like tons of interrupts. PWM it has analog output as like, a true analog output. Um, it's it's low power. You know, as low power as an 8-bit processor, but you get 32-bit processor performance. You know, you compile it with uh, AVR GCC, and, and we thought it would be a really nice thing to pair this with a Bluetooth Low Energy module, so you get a lot of power and this wireless capability, so you can, you know, basically design apps, and you have a lot of space to work in. So um, this is the the Feather board. So it's compatible, the same shape and size and pinout as um, the other feathers that we have. So all of our feather wings work with it. So you can plug in a motor driver tomorrow, and it'll, it just works. Or we have a NeoPixel feather wing, and you can add, a, you know, 32 LEDs if you'd also like. Um, we also have more feather wings. We have a prototyping feather wing. We talked about it earlier. Um, but I like this. It's, it's very powerful. You can program it and debug it over USB. Um, it has LiPoly charging built in, so you can run off of USB or LiPoly, and it'll switch between the two, whichever one's higher it'll use. Um, you can stack wings on top of it. It's compact. It's got mounting holes. Uh, it's got a little battery sense uh, resistor network, so you can sense the battery. Um, and of course, it's got the Bluefruit module, which is awesome, and uh, we're constantly working on and, and doing improvements. So if you want to connect to um, computers wirelessly without needing like an XB dongle, this is a way to do it. Everything from Windows 8 up and X, uh, OS 10 on Mac and Linux has native Bluetooth low energy support. Uh, sometimes it'll dongle. Uh, and even Windows 7, we got it working by doing this like really crazy hack um, using the yeah. Noble project. So it is possible even Windows 7 to have communication between Bluetooth and your desktop. But what's really good for is phones and tablets because pretty much every phone and tablet now has Bluetooth low energy. And it's, it's pretty much what all, all devices nowadays are using. Uh, and we have a really great app for this as well. So I thought I would show off the app. Yeah. Neighborhood. Let's do it to the overhead. Okay, so I'm over here. So let me lock. So um, you know you can power this from a battery, so it's kind of handy. And I have the feather just plugged into a breadboard. It's breadboard friendly, and it has a, a NeoPixel ring. And then a um, little red LED just lets you know that um, it's waiting for the app to connect. And then you can download the free Bluetooth Low Energy app. We have Bluefruit LE Connect, and there's also the source code available on um, GitHub as well. So you you can design your own app, and we also have information about the the UART um, UUIDs used. So it shows up as um, Adafruit Bluefruit LE. Hold on, let me just zoom in a little bit, so you can connect to it. And uh, I'm going to demo the controller, um, and the controller has a color picker. It just makes it the easiest demo, and you can send you know data pretty easily from your phone it just this is a really great demo showing like okay hey like in about two seconds you plug in a neopixel ring and then you know you've got um, color sending back and forth so you can make like a custom lamp that's not the only thing the app can do the app also has um, a controller so you can have a little up down left right a b c d button controller so we do we demo a little robot yeah. that you can use this um, on a on a, a tablet or iPhone to control a little robot. Um, you can also stream sensor data, which I, also, I really like. For example, the quaternion data from the orientation of the phone itself can be sent. So we also did a demo where we had a robot and then the acceleration and, and tilt of yeah. the um, phone or tablet is what um, makes it go. You can also send GPS data. You can turn on the GPS, you know, allow GPS, and then you can send your GPS location 
through the iPad to the um, Blue for LE. So like, let's say you don't want to add a GPS. If you have your tablet or phone, you can just use that and, and transmit the GPS data from the phone to um, the Blue Fruit to save you that, or gyro, magnetometer, accelerometer, quaternion. Um, we also have uh, pin IO. Um, this isn't set up, so it's going to time out. Yeah, it's going to say no, it's default. Um, where you can you know, control the analog outputs, or sorry, the uh, analog inputs, or um, you know, PWM outputs of each pin. So that's another capability. I recently uh, merged that in so that it works on this, this processor. Um, and then uh, you can update the firmware. And then um, you can also just use UART mode. And UART mode is like you just send raw data like RX and TX from one to the other. It's not going to do anything because it's in color picker mode. But basically, you can have data sent back and forth. And you can write your own app. We, we have an app for Android and Bluetooth. Uh, Android. Um, 4.4 or higher has Bluetooth low energy support. Yeah. And of course, um, I'm using a, an, an iOS tablet or phone. That works really great. Uh, and you can also use desktop. It doesn't have the full app, but you can use desktop for, for data transfer. I like this if you don't want to get an XB or you don't want to have a radio. This is, it's like Bluetooth energy is in everything. So kind of handy. Um, an all-in-one little portable Bluetooth low energy board. Uh, I've seen a lot of people prototype wearables and apps using the feather line. So it's a nice upgrade. Yeah. Okay. And with that, is new products, Lady Ada. Thank you. Yay. Good work. All right. Oh, wait. So somebody asked about the um, it for I forgot one thing. What? There is an, another thing that you can do with okay, we're back. controller. Sorry. I always mm -hmm. forget this. There is, sorry, in UART mode. Oh, come on. UART. You can add MQTT mode where you can stream data to and from Adafruit I.O. So you can have, um, you can use your phone as a tether, basically. So you have it on cellular or Wi-Fi. And then the Bluetooth data can come and go between these two and get sent via MQTT into um, Adafruit I.O., which is our, our, you can actually set an MQTT server. But it basically allows you to, to, to transmit data to the internet and, and store long term or receive data from the internet. So that's really handy, too. I keep forgetting about that. It's like, maybe we'll make a separate window for that, because it's uh, often forgotten. Okay. All right. And with Thank that, you. With that is really the end of new products for tonight. Well, I always like to have all the details. Okay.